Hi, everyone. I'm Sam Ekman of Gold Derby. With me is Victoria Thomas, nominated this year at the Emmys for Outstanding Casting for a Drama Series for The Last of Us. Uh, and this series, I think, is very unique, actually, because it's not just an adaptation of a video game. It's an adaptation of a very universally acclaimed game with an enormous dedicated fan base. So to me, that that brings up this question of if I was the casting director, there's this question of how close are we sticking to the game when it comes to casting? So how how did you kind of approach and answer that question? Well, I think uh, from the beginning, uh, we wanted to have the ability to introduce uh, sort of new actors into it, but also to sort of honor the game and honor the actors who have been a part of it um, and also honor the fans uh, by including, you know, like Jeffrey Pierce and, and various people from the game so that we had sort of a nice mix of, you know, sort of known and unknown at least, at least vocally from, from the game. But yeah, just known and, and unknown. I think Neil Druckmann um, was very much in favor of that, Craig. I think it was just sort of a general approach that we took uh, from the from the very beginning. Yeah. And I think, you know, for the central roles, uh, Joel and Ellie, mm -hmm. uh, to me, their relationship between those characters is kind of pivotal to the success of this story. How do you gauge that? in a casting process. What was it about Joel, um, you know, about Bella and Pedro? You know, I think you just, well, first of all, I think that the characters were so nicely delineated that if you had good actors there, if they hit all the character beats of those two characters, that's a pretty interesting chemistry that happens. So mm -hmm. you, know, you have to give Craig and, 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 Neil credit for writing them so distinctively. And then you just hopefully try to cast actors uh, that are compelling on some sort of level. Um, I mean, uh, I think with Bella and with casting that particular role, um, it, it was hard trying to get someone who was very young, but who had a sort of lived life within her. I mean, she had a toughness, um, just a, a sort of a depth, along with being a young girl that we were sort of looking for. Um, we first started to look at uh, sort of actresses, I think they were like 15 and younger. So we were starting off very young, young younger than Bella. And um, there are varying degrees of either really great, but didn't have the sort of uh, toughness we wanted or eccentricity that we wanted. Um, and Bella just seemed to sort of fulfill um, sort of everything that we were looking for. Plus she's just sort of eccentric. You know, she's just sort of unusual, you know? So she's not the average like young girl, just in, in look and attitude and feeling. So that's, that's what happened with her. Uh, and you mentioned Craig and Neil before. Um, I would love to hear kind of your process as casting director, because you have to sort of team up with a director or writer to fulfill their their vision. So does that feel like starting fresh on every project? You have to kind of do a 180 on every new project you do? Well, I think every director is different. It's the first time I work with Craig. So it's sort of trying to figure out how they work. Um, I think it was very good at communicating what they were looking for. They were very precise because we would ask for character descriptions and they're very specific. So that's really helpful. Um, you know, this was a process that was started during the pandemic and everything was done via Zoom. We started casting this in the fall of 2020. So, you know, Craig and I, never met in person until the premiere like two years <laughs> later two and a half years later so it's also that was sort of a you know just sort of a it's something you have to work your way through you it's know it's, so it's uh but we managed so yeah I don't know if that answered the question yeah, yeah, it does. Um, I, I was also, I wanted to go back to another thing you said, which was the the kind of mix of well-known actors and unknown actors. Mm -hmm. When you have both of those in a project, 
what is the decision making process like of where do we put this new find this new discovery of an actor well it's uh it's always an odd uh you know there was a desire on our part to have a couple of other big names and other roles and it just didn't work out mm -hmm. um i think one of the things that uh made uh getting, I guess, bigger names or whatever uh, for the show was that, you know, most of these characters have one episode and a lot of people, whether it's Melanie Linsky or uh, uh, whoever, I mean, they don't usually retain a Wesley. R Retina did a TV series for five years or something. You know, Melanie's done various TV shows. So it was really sort of having to explain to agents why why their actor should do a guest star episode <laughs> on a limited you know one episode guest star you know so you sort of had to get past that first and then the material sort of spoke for itself and then Craig had relationships I had relationships so by hook or crook we got some of the bigger known people into it and hopefully not in a way that you know took you out of what out, out of the the show that the atmosphere that the show was was setting the world yeah. that we were routina wesley was one of the performances i really enjoyed because it was surprising to me as someone who played the game because she came at it with a very different energy mm -hmm. from what is presented was that a conscious choice of i want someone you know, we're looking for someone who's going to bring something really unexpected to that role. I think we just wanted a good actor and someone who was believable as being a former, was, was like a DA in a big city. And, you know, I think that's what we're going for. I don't think we we're necessarily saying we're going to go against what she was in the game and point her in a different direction. We just wanted a really good actress who conveyed a certain, you believed her as a former DA and you know, who's a very good actress. That's, it really wasn't anything about, it wasn't a conscious effort to go against any other uh, interpretation of the part. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the the really great, you know, unknowns uh, discovery for this show is the uh, Kevon Woodard, who uh, it's his first series uh, yeah. and he scores an Emmy nomination for it. Yeah. That has to make you a, a bit proud and and happy for, for getting him in this. Very. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what what was it was there something in his uh audition like that you can pinpoint that made you say oh that's that's it that's the character well i mean for someone who hadn't done much acting at all i mean he was he was watchable and he wasn't afraid of uh, the camera wasn't a, he just seemed to sort of slip into the character as best he could given the the audition situation, which was his mother um, signing with him, giving him a context, the context that we gave her, and just trying to recreate the scenes in their apartment. And something came through from him that didn't come through from other actors who read for the part. And at least when I saw him, I went, okay, I, I think he can do this. And you, you, it wasn't like a, it's not like it was a home run, the, the audition was a home run, you know, but at least it was like a double, you know, and, and there there was room to to sort of grow. You could sort of sense that. And we really took a, you know, it was rolling the dice to a certain extent. And he just like, talk about knock it out the park. I mean, I'm really happy for him, really proud of him. Yeah, it was a great performance. Um, and also great uh, in their roles was, uh, I was really pleased that you incorporated actors from the video game. Uh, yeah. And it was fun having them, some of them like Ashley Johnson is in a new role as yeah. as mother of Ellie, but then Merle Dandridge gets to come in and, yes. and reinterpret the character she's already done. Was there an original thought of like, everyone's gonna play something different? Why Why Merle in her role versus the others in new ones? You know, we there were other actresses that we did look at for Merle's role, but also we were considering Merle. I think, you know, Craig wanted to sort of see well, what what else is there. That's that's one that we uh, 
we spent a little bit of time on. Yeah. So we did see some other some other actors for that, but in the end, Merle went out and mm -hmm. she's great. Yeah. A, a friend in casting once kind of told me one of the her favorite aspects of it was watching people grow through the years, even if they're someone they're not using for a project, if they don't use them after an audition. Yeah. Could you speak on that? Is that does that ring true for you? What what is it like watching people throughout the years of their career? Well, it's sort of uh, you sort of feel like a, a bit of a mother hen, I guess. But it's just really sort of it's like watching a child grow up and mature, and it's you know you can be a fan of someone for a very long time and. This has happened, man. You bring them in time after time after time after time, and they don't get the part. <laughs> they don't get the part. And then what I say to people, you know, sometimes it's just timing. It's the right role, the right time, because of you, because of who you are as a human being and an actor at this point, and this role just sort of meets you. You know, it's Chad Bozeman in 42. Chad had been around, you know, but it's the right role, the right time. Um, and I've seen that happen a lot where people, it's, it's very gratifying to see people grow and rise to the occasion. Yes. Yeah, so your friend is, is correct. It's, uh, yeah, it's like watching your kids grow up. Mm. And, um, you're here uh, again at the Emmys in, uh, with another nomination and the casting, uh, categories, I think have only been around since the nineties. Mm. It's interesting because it's not a discipline. I think that many awards bodies include the Emmys thankfully do, but um, I feel like there's maybe like misconceptions or many unknowns for certain people about what yeah. goes into your work. So what, what would you want to tell those folks about what you do? What, why is this job so vital and exciting to you? Well, I think it's, uh, you know, like a, it's creative. It, it affects the movie or the television show. It's you're in partnership with a director like you are, like a DP is, like a costume designer is, like a, you know, uh, the various department heads are. And uh, it's, I mean, I think we really have a big influence on what, on who you're looking at. Up, up on the screen in collaboration with a with, with a director. So I feel like it's impactful. I feel like our job is very impactful and it's creative and it's weird, you know, we do a lot of things, it's all behind closed doors, you know, and there are things that you can't say, you know, you can't really, I can't really get into certain aspects of auditions and, and th you know, and there are conversations that are had that are sometimes hard conversations, you know, that's, you have to, it's have to be sort of a safety, a very safe place because you can be very uh, blunt about things and people and, and you have to be able to do that without someone taking it personally or without it being seen as, as, as personal. So I think a lot of people don't know what we do because a lot is done behind closed doors. And I think what's great about what we do is that we really are affecting how a movie's gonna turn out. And that's very exciting. Well, uh, you certainly affected this one in a great way uh, because The Last of Us came together beautifully. So yeah. thank you for, for walking me through it. And for everyone watching, make sure you subscribe to Gold Derby. Stick with us the rest of this season. Victoria, it was a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sam. Appreciate it. Bye-bye.